So, little Hans is very interesting for us for various reasons. At that time, before 1910, and the next couple of decades, until Melanie Klein moves to London in 1927, psychoanalysts mostly believe it is impossible to work with children. Child analysis is something that is not possible. The reason for that is that the definition of psychoanalysis at that time is that someone should be able to free associate. Someone should be on the couch telling you whatever comes to their minds and then you use interpretations, very wise, brief sentences. This person understands the interpretation, has an insight and then starts feeling better. This was considered to be impossible with children. Try to imagine a child of five or seven on the couch for 50 minutes. Ridiculous. If a child would be able, if a child of five or seven would be able to be on the couch for 50 minutes, I'd be worried. Children allegedly do not have their verbal skills, their cognition developed well enough at that age to be able to free associate and to be able to understand what we are telling them. Much more for them is in the physical world, in the movement, and so on and so forth. So, until Melanie Klein came up with the idea that we should use the play of children as a form of free association, let children play, observe the play, and that is uh, an analogy to the analysis of adults, people didn't know how to work with children. Freud never treated the child. All of his developmental theories are armchair psychology, a little bit of observation of his children, and reconstructions from what he hears from adult patients. Little Hans is the only exception, and in this case Freud was not a therapist. Hans was a son of a person who was a very famous music critic in Vienna at that time, who was one of the members of Freud's Wednesday meetings. He complained to Freud that his son had problems, and Freud in a way supervised him. He would tell him what to tell his son, what to do with his son, then the man would return, then Freud would hear, and then give feedback again, and he was a sort of supervisor. The paper was published with the title Analysis of a Phobia. So the core problem for the boy was fear. I hope you can see this. This is from a very good uh, comic book, Freud for Beginners. And it shows little Hans's fear of horses. He was afraid of going out in the street. At that time there were still horse carriages in Vienna, not just for tourists, but for everyday life. And he was afraid to meet a horse, and horse would bite him, and that would be very painful. Freud's and father's reconstruction showed, they believed at least, that the fear of horses was the fear of the father. So you can see here, I hope, he, the father with the horse head instead of human face. Horses were strong and tall and powerful. And Freud believed the boy was afraid of the father who was stronger and taller and more powerful. And this all was connected with the basic Freudian topic, basic Freudian trope, if you will. And that's the Oedipus complex. The boy had a younger sister. At that time, childbirths were not, um, children were not delivered in hospitals, but still at home. The boy, at a certain moment, was invited to see his newborn sister. He entered the room, he saw his mother, he saw a baby girl, and he saw blood everywhere. Seeing a naked girl in Freud's and father's reconstruction, the boy saw, for the first time, a child without a penis. He saw blood everywhere, so he, they believed at least, had a fantasy of castration. The girl was born and immediately castrated, and so there was blood everywhere around. So he became afraid, 
he might be castrated as well. And then this was symbolized with a horse. His father was the agent of castration. He was afraid his father might uh, punish him and castrate him. The boy's name was Herbert Graf. His father is, is, is the very well known at that time, Max Graf, uh, among other things. Uh, wrote a book on Shostakovich, wrote a lot about Mahler while, while Mahler was still alive. And the boy grew up, moved to the United States, and became a very important opera producer in New York City. So in a way, he remained in his father's profession, some sort of identification because his father was present. My personal favorite detail of this story is that when everything is over, the analysis is over, the fear has disappeared, the boy visits Freud for the first time, and the only time. So his father takes him to Freud, they spend some time talking to him, at least I don't know what they talk about, I don't know whether it is known anyway, and when they go out, they walk in the streets, the boy asks the father, does the professor talk to God? And I like that sentence very much, because obviously so many people believed the professor, Freud, could talk to God. For so many people he was like a prophet, like a, a charismatic figure, and a child managed to put it in one brilliant sentence.